you know, in the broad picture, there is no racial divide when it comes to the, the trouble, the climate emergency, because we've got one planet and all of us are aboard. And so now there's some effects that are hitting people of color much sooner and in more difficult ways. Yes, but everybody is in this. Everybody is in this. So with a warmer planet, I want to go back to 1995 in Chicago, July 13th. This is the day that the temperature hit 106 degrees. And for the next four or five days, it would stay hot well above 90 degrees. Over the course of that heat wave, almost 740 people, I believe the number is actually 739 people died. Well, that's what we have on the record. Most of them were black. And most were in housing projects, Cabrini Green for one. Now, what happened there? Why people in housing projects? Well, this is related to systemic racism that goes back to the 1930s and the redlining practice. So redlining was used to say where you could get a bank loan and where you couldn't. And it turns out that in the more than 200 cities that the federal government graded where it would be okay to have homeowners, um, they outlined in green, the A minus, uh, the, the, the A areas, they put in D, were outlined in red, and neighborhoods of color were pretty much systematically outlined in red. In other words, if you wanted to buy a house, you couldn't get a loan from the bank for the part of town that you lived in redlining. Now, this pushed people into public housing, or kept people in public housing. And what, what happened is that public housing was built, you know, on all that concrete and uh, brick and everything. It, those places in public housing became what is more or less scientifically known as heat islands. In the city, when it's hot, those parts of the city are much hotter than the rest of the city. Uh, you know, uh, let, me clear the, the, let me be clear, the temperature differences are huge. For example, some research that we have, uh, and you can find this on the Living on Earth website if you want to follow up, that it could be as much as 20 degrees warmer in the same town in the part of town that was the heat island as opposed to the part of town where there were trees and less dense residential housing. Let me say that again, 20 degrees warmer. So no wonder people crowded into those housing projects um, had such difficult outcomes because it was that much hotter. And at the time, Mayor Daly said, oh, well, yeah, it's hot. Well, yeah, it was very hot. It was lethally hot. And it was hotter to people of color because we were crowded in these public housing projects that were hotter than the other parts of the city, thanks to redlining, thanks to not having the option to get away from this. So if it's a 90 degree d a day in one part of the city, another part of the city could see a 110 degree day. We actually don't have numbers from that uh, July 13th, 1995 disaster in Chicago. We have the overall number of 106. That was the official temperature. But if that 10 degree difference actually holds or 20 degree difference actually holds, those housing projects were infernos. So, you know, our temperature, you know, hopefully today I'm 98.6 degrees. My body does reasonably well trying to cope with, oh, 102, 103 degrees, I can sweat and, and deal with that, but past that, mm -mm, don't work. And the people who died were older, who were shut-ins. Um, and, and heat is debilitating. So as the heat slowly built, they were unable really to respond and move. By the way, there was a set of people in those housing projects that, that nonetheless did survive. And those were people who were being called on. It might have been a Meals on Wheels program, it might have been their church, 
somebody was knocking on the door and saying, hey, how you doing in there, Mrs. Burke? And if she wasn't doing well, they helped them out to, to get them to, uh, to, a, to a place where they could, uh, a heat shelter, really, uh, where they would be safe. But people who didn't have that connection, they perished. So this is really shocking. This is so shocking that, you know, a racist policy from now a century ago, I mean, we look back at things like slavery or Jim Crow, but just redlining for housing is part of the pattern of environmental racism in this country, deadly environmental racism.